Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please? Welcome to Upstage Theater's production of No Cowards, Blythe Spirit. Blythe Spirit is a 1941 English satire about the inner relationship between the living and the dead. Better yet, between husbands and wives. So, it was written in a kinder and gentler age, an age when we could go out to eat. They come to the theater for a two hour theater. <laughs> but even here, by spirit, we have to deal with today's world. So, you got those cell phones, those beepers, take them out. Now's the time to turn them off. If you have any crinkly candies, unwrap them now, please, so you don't bother a paper or one of the actors. Now, if you look at your programs also, you'll see the future productions of Upstage Theaters, and we welcome you to come to those. Without further ado, get back in your chair, unwrap those free foot candies, and enjoy the old coward's life spirit. Before you grow tired of me, would you forget me so soon? What a hard thing to say. No, I think it's interesting. Well, 
gun in the first place, I hadn't forgotten that firearm. I remember her distinctly indeed. I remember how fascinating she was and how maddening. I remember her gay charm when she achieved a way or something, her extreme acidity when she didn't. I remember her physical attractiveness, which was tremendous, and her spiritual integrity, which was nil. No. <laughs> I remember how morally untidy she was. <laughs> Be careful, I'm planning for it. My book must be a complete impostor. 
That's one of the most important factors of the whole story. But what exactly are you hoping to get from that? Jargon, principally, a few tricks of the trade. I haven't been to a seance in years. I want to refresh my memory. <laughs> Do you think she tells fortunes? I love having my fortune told. Yes, I expect so. Now, I was once told when I'm here at South Sea that I was surrounded by the lilies and the golden seven. I've been worrying me for days. <laughs> we really must all be serious, you know, and pretend that we would leave implicitly, otherwise she won't play. Oh, also, she might really mind. It would be cruel to upset her. I shall be as good as gold. <laughs> Have you ever told the doctor professionally? Uh, yeah, she had influenza last January. But she's only been here just over a year, you know. Oh, here she is. Uh, you're, she knows it doesn't chill out tonight. You're, you're not going to spring at all. Oh, no, of course not. It was all arranged last week. I told her I was profoundly interested in anything to do with the occult, and she blossomed like a rose. <laughs> <laughs> you don't agree, darling? Yes. <laughs>
poet. The word was an unfortunate choice. Oh, I'm very sorry, I'm sure. No, oh, no, no, just Catherine, at least. Please don't apologize. When did you first discover that you had these extraordinary powers? Oh, when I was quite tiny. My mother was a medium before me, you know, so I had every opportunity of starting in on the ground floor, as you might say. I had my first troubles when I was four. And my first protoplasmic manifestation when I was five and a half. Oh, oh, an exciting thing that was. I shall never forget it. Of course, the manifestation itself was quite small and a very short duration, but still, a child of my tender years, most gratifying. <laughs> Your mother must have been very proud. <laughs> Fingers 
should be touching. <laughs> That's right, not the crystal. There you go. Now, I, I presume I may use the scrap of those. Yeah, would you like me to stop? Oh, no, 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 no. Please stay where you are. I can manage. <laughs> Let's see what we have. Well, no. 
Well, except for my cousin in the civil service. And he wouldn't likely want to communicate with me. We hadn't spoken in years. Are you Mr. Condomine's cousin in the civil service? I'm afraid we've drawn a blank. Don't you think anyone else might have brains? Oh, it might be Mrs. Plummet, you know. She died on that Monday. But I don't see why old Mrs. Plummet should wish to talk to me. We had very little in common. Well, you never know. Are you old, Mrs. Plummet? She was quite dead. Perhaps you'd better shout. <laughs> Are you old, Mrs. Plummet? I'm afraid there's no one here at all. How oh, how disappointing. You know, just when we were getting on so well. I'm to be quiet. Well, oh, I had hoped to avoid it, but I guess there's nothing for it but for me to go into a trance. It really is so exhausting. Well, let me start the music again. Uh, not always. Don't play all. Oh, what's the matter with you? I'm afraid it would be imprudent to change horses in midstream, as they say. And you're on the way. All right. <laughs>
have some overlooking already in the such in the do if we need to park here. Well, uh, wouldn't you like to uh, leave your bicycle here and let us drive you? Oh, I think you should, Madam Arcadi. I mean, after that trance and all, you can't be feeling quite yourself. Oh, nonsense. And fit as a fiddle. Always be your capital after a trance. <laughs> Good night to Mrs. Condamine. I'm so sorry so little happy. It's that cold of death these I expect. You know how children are when they don't feel well. Oh, you must try again another evening. That would be lovely. Good night, Mrs. Bradman. Oh, good night. You know, it's just really, I felt the table absolutely moving out of my hands. <laughs> That's a Congratulations, Madam Arcasi. Oh, I'm well aware of the irony in your voice, Dr. Bradman. As a matter of fact, I think you'd make an admirable subject for telepathic hypnosis. A chum of mine is an expert, and I think she would really like to look you I'm sure I should be charmed. Yes. Well, good night, Mr. Condamine. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, you have to be quiet. She'll hear you. No, I can't tell that. I really can't. I've been only in it for ages. Oh, she put you in your place, George, sir. Oh, right. Man, right. I have to have a horse. Oh, but she must believe. Of course not. The whole thing's a put-up job. <laughs> oh, right. goodness. She's probably not convinced herself by now. Uh, possibly. The, the trash was genuine enough, but that, of course, is easily accounted for. Hysteria? Yeah, some form of hysteria, I should imagine. Oh, well, I do hope your husband got enough atmosphere for his blood. But he would have bought a great deal more if he hadn't spoiled everything by showing off. Oh. I'm really very cross with him. Uh -huh. Oh, it's shut. Oh, well, maybe it was one of those, uh, what do you call them, that Madame Arcadi was talking about. Elementals. She never thought of it. No, she distinctly said that it's the wrong time of year for elementals. I thought she was going to bed me off down the drive to tell him to speed. We had a bit of trouble lighting her lamp. Oh, the poor thing. I have a theory about her, you know. I don't think she's completely sincere. Oh, Charles, how could she be? Is it possible, Doctor, some form of self-hypnosis? Uh, possibly, as I was explaining to your wife just oh, now. Oh, you really hysterical. must be going. You know it's getting kind of late. You see, every time I begin to talk about something that really interests me, my wife interrupts me. Well, it's because I'm all right. <laughs> it's almost 11. We really need to be going. All right. Yes, I do have to get up abominably early tomorrow morning. I have a patient being operated on in Canterbury. Thank you very much for Great evening. I will never forget it. It was so much fun. Thank you. Good night, Mrs. Condamine. Thank you so much. We'll let you know if we find any poltergeists swirling about. Oh, we should never forgive you if you didn't. <laughs>
is so strange seeing you again. That's better. What's better? Your voice was kinder. Was I ever unkind to you when you were alive? Often. How could you? I'm sure that's an exaggeration. <laughs> Nonsense! You were absolutely big that time you took me to call while we stayed in that awful hotel. You hit me with a billion cue. Well, only very, very gently. <laughs> I loved you very much. I loved you too, Elvira. Isn't that horrible? Perhaps it's as well if I'm more safe at any length of time. I suppose I shall wake up eventually, but right now I feel strangely peaceful. That's right, darling. Put your head back. Like this. Can you feel anything? <laughs> Only a slight breeze through my hair. Oh, well, it's better than nothing. <laughs> I suppose if I'm really out of my mind, I'll put me in an asylum. Oh, don't worry about that, darling. Just relax. Oh, poor Ruth. Oh, to hell with Ruth. Cool. 
that I've been trying to explain to you for hours. Then there's obviously something wrong with you, Charles. Yes, yes, there's something wrong with me. There's something fundamentally wrong with me. That's why I've been imploring your sympathy. All I've gotten was a sterile temperature lecture. But you had been drinking, Charles. There's no denying that. No more than usual. Well, how do you account for it, then? I can't account for it. That's what's so awful. Well, how do you feel now? Well, what about yesterday at lunch? Yesterday? Yesterday I felt fine. Uh, well, what did you have for lunch? Well, you should know. You had it with me. Well, let's see. There was the lemon sole and that cheese thing. Now, I don't see why having a cheese thing at lunch should make me see my deceased wife after dinner. Well, you never know. He's <laughs> rather rich. Well, why didn't you see your dead husband then? You had just as much of it as I did. We're not getting anywhere with this. Nor shall we, as long as you insist on ascribing supernatural phenomena to colonic irritation. Well, how should I find that Not the least bit you brought me. never have. Well, a psychoanalyst then. I refuse to endure months of expensive humiliation, only to be told at the end of it that at the age of four, I was in love with my rocking horse. Well, what do you suggest then? I think I am going mad. Well, how do you feel now? Now, physically feeling? Altogether. Well, I'll be good work again. Be quite calm. Not seeing or hearing anything at least on your No, nothing at all. Well, you've absolutely ruined that bowl by the sun dial. Looks like you made a sound. Please. 
Okay, later on. Oh, don't worry, she will. You will do what I ask, won't you, Elvira? Well, that depends on what it is. You see the flowers on the mantle? Yes, to have them. I myself this morning. Very untidy, I may say so. You may not. Very well, darling. I never shall again, I promise. Watch it, Elvira. We'll take the flowers from the mantle to the table and back again. You will do that for me, won't you, Elvira, just to please me? I don't see why I should. Please! All right, just this once. Uh, please watch carefully, and Elvira will take the flowers to the table and back again. Go ahead. Watch me. <gasps> you see? Oh, oh, how dare you, Charles? You should be ashamed of yourself. What the world is for? It's a trick I know. No, 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 it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. Elvira, do something else for God's sake. Certainly. Anything to oblige. Look, watch. Watch. See? Look. You're trying to get rid of me. You're trying to try me. Mrs. 
Kā tu maina? A ja mīņu bomba tad visi atpēc un saunējā jau. I had no idea that 
there was any ulterior motive at work. Ulterior motive? Really? Your husband was obviously eager to contact his first wife. I had known that at the onset. I should naturally have consulted you first. My husband was not anxious to get in touch with anyone. He merely wanted the material for a mystery story that he's writing on a homicidal medium. Am I to understand that I was invited here only <coughs> in a spit of mockery? He merely wanted to make notes of the tricks of the trade. Tricks of the trade! Insufferable! I feel we have nothing more to say to one another, Mrs. Carmine. Good night. Oh, please, sir. Oh, your attitude from the outset has been most unkind, Mrs. Carmine. And some of your remarks have been discourteous in the extreme. And I would like to say, without a word, that you and your husband were foolish enough to tamper with the unseen for paltry motives. And in a spirit of ribaldry, then whatever has happened to you is your own fault. And as far as I am concerned, you can do it your own duty. Good night. Like this, she's usually so equitable. No, 
not free. She has a hard mouth, Charles. The mouth's got nothing to do with it. I resent your discussing Ruth as if she were a horse. Do you love her? Well, of course I do. As much as you love me? Oh, don't be silly. It's all very different. Good. Nothing could ever quite be the same now, could it? You always behave very badly. Oh, Charles. You know, it grieves me to see that your sojourn into the other world hasn't improved you in the least. <laughs> Go on, darling. I love you. Pretend you cross with me. I'm now going up to talk to Ruth. Oh, how are they, Custom? Oh, don't be idiotic. I can't let her go like that. I'm to be a little nice and sympathetic to her. Well, I don't see why. If she's set on being disagreeable, I should just let her get on with it. Well, this whole business has been very difficult for her. We must be a little understanding. Well, she should learn to be more adaptable. Well, she probably will in time. It's been a shock. Well, has it been a shock for you too, darling? Well, of course it has. What did you expect? A nice shock? I remember that whenever you were overpowering me, do you? It always made you want it something. I think it's hard of you to be so suspicious. All I want is to be with you. Well, you are. I mean, alone, darling. If you go and have a roof and smile all over her, she'll just come down again, and our entire evening together will be spoiled. You are incorrigibly selfish. Well, I haven't seen you for seven years. It's only natural that I should want to spend a little time alone with you, you know, to talk over old times. All right, I'll let you go talk to her if you really think it's your duty. Yes, of course it is. You'll come down again very soon. You won't be long. I'll probably dress for dinner. Oh, you don't have to dress for me, darling. I always dress for well, dinner. You, well, what are you going to have? I should love to see you eat something really delicious. You could girl, now, Barbara. You could play the gramophone or something if you like. Thank you, Charles. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, I wouldn't worry about your husband's arm. This is kind of my lunch. I hope it's only a sprain. It's not his arm I'm worried about. Oh, I'm sure Edith will be up and around in just a couple of days. <laughs> Who gave notice this morning? Oh, how dreadful. You know servants, they're awful, aren't they? I mean, there's not a shred of gratitude. First sign of a little trouble, they run like rats off a sinking ship. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to worry about, Mrs. Condamine. It's only a slight sprain. Oh, I'm so relieved. You did put up quite a fuss when I examined it. Men are much worse patients than women, you know. Particularly highly strung men like your husband. You mean he's highly strung? Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, I wanted to talk to you about that. Uh, I'm afraid he's been overworking lately. Overworked? Yes, he's in rather a nervous condition. Uh, nothing to uh, be worried about. What makes you think so? Well, I know the symptoms. Uh, he's, uh, of course, well, the shock of this fall might have something to do with it, but uh, I should still advise a complete rest for a few weeks. You should go away. Yes, I do. In cases like that, a change of atmosphere can work wonders. Well, what symptoms did you notice? Oh, nothing to be unduly alarmed about. A certain air of strain, a few rather marked irrelevancies in his conversation, an inability to focus his eyes on the person he's talking to. Bring up all of these specific examples. Well, yes. Uh, he suddenly shouted, uh, what are you doing in the bathroom? <laughs> and then later on, when I was writing him a prescription, he suddenly said, uh, for God's sake, behave yourself. I'll wait that time. <laughs> 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 Would you like some sherry or something, Dr. Adam? Uh, no, thank you. We really must be off. Oh, she'll be all right in a few days. She's still recovering from the concussion. Now oh, it's funny, isn't it? I mean, that your housemaid and your husband should fall on the same day. <laughs> Come along, Violet. You're talking too much as usual. <laughs> well, I'll pop in and have a look at both patients sometime tomorrow morning. Well, how does it feel? Well, it's only a slight sprain, you know. Is this damn thing absolutely essential? Well, it's a wise precaution. It will prevent you using your left hand, except when it's really necessary. Yes, well, I had intended on driving into Folkestone this evening. Oh, it would be better if you did. It's rather inconvenient. Oh, you can easily wait and go tomorrow, Charles. But I haven't seen a movie for seven years. Let me be the first to congratulate you. Oh. What's that, old man? Charles. <laughs> Sorry. Well, you can drive the car so long as you go very slowly and carefully. Uh, your gear change is on the right, isn't it? Yes. Yes, well, use your left hand as good as possible. All right? You'd best stay home tonight, Charles. Well, couldn't you drive him in? Oh, I'm afraid not. There's lots to do in the house, and there's Edith to be attended to. Well, I'll leave you two to fight it out among yourselves, but remember, if you do insist on going, carefully does it. The, the roads are very slippery anyhow. Yes. Come along, Violet. Good night. It's a 
What, Charles? A bloody duel to the death between Elmira and me. Don't you realize that? Let's talk of battles and duels. She came here with one purpose and one purpose only. It's to get you to herself. Ever. Now, how on earth could she do that? By killing you all for Killing course. you all for the you <laughs> Why? Why do you suppose that Edith fell down the stairs and nearly cracked her skull? Now, what's this got to do with Edith? The whole top of the stair was covered with axle grease. Cook discovered it afterwards. Through with your making this up. I'm not. I swear I'm not. Why do you suppose that when you were locking off that branch of the pear tree that the matter broke? It was completely sawn through on both sides. Oh, no. Why should she want to kill me? I can understand her wanting to kill you, but why me? <laughs> Probably some sort of spiritual remarriage or something. I wouldn't put anything past her. So we can so slide. She just couldn't. Couldn't she just? I brought you that as a character. She was always blind and irresponsible. But I would never believe her capable of love planning. Perhaps the spirit world has deteriorated her. Ooh. What would you do? Don't let on have a suspect thing. Behave as though nothing had happened. Going in to see Madame Arcati immediately. She's got to help us. Even if she can't get rid of Elvira, perhaps she can render her harmless. I'm going into town. I'll be I'll be there only half an hour. Tell Elvira that I've got to see the man. This is a hall. Oh, never mind that. Remember, don't give up by so much as a flick of an eye. Well, look out. What? I say it's a nice lookout, Elvira. What's a nice lookout? The weather, the temperature's going down and down and down. I find it hard to believe at this particular moment you would have nothing further to discuss with the weather. I can't stand it. I really can't. Please, darling, please. Has she broken out again? Did she say anything? She asked if you had broken out again. As you might have suspected, Elvira, Charles and I were not talking about the weather. I should loathe to think that you have, that we have any secrets from you. I was trying to persuade Charles not to go into Folkestone this evening. But as he is determined to put your wishes before mine, I have nothing further to say. And so, I hope the two of you enjoy yourselves. There. Have you been beastly to her? Yeah, Ruth doesn't like being thwarted any more than you do. <laughs> she's a woman of sterling character. It's a pity she's so unforgiving. I think I mentioned before, I don't want to discuss Ruth with you. It makes me feel uncomfortable. I want to mention her again. Good. Betty. Betty, or what? To go to Boston, of course. Oh. I want to find some sharing for us. I don't believe you want to take me at all. Well, of course I do. I just think it would be better to wait until tomorrow. It's a filthy night out. How familiar this is. Familiar in one way. All through our married life, I only had to suggest something before we started edging me off. I'm not edging you off, Elvira. I merely said that... Oh, all right, all right. We'll spend another cozy, intimate evening at home with proof. Sewing away in that hideous table center and snapping at us like a tarot. I'm perfectly aware that the table center is hideous. It happens to be a birthday present for my mother. Well, you don't have to defend Ruth's taste to me. It's thoroughly artsy crossy. You know it. It's not artsy crossy. She's ruined this room. What? Look at those curtains and that hideous <laughs> shawl on the table. But that was a present from Lady McKinnon. She sent him from the girl. Obviously, because it had been sent to her from Birmingham. <coughs> don't behave yourself, Elvira. I shan't take you into Boston ever. Well, don't be elderly and grand with me, Charles. Please, I want to go now. When I finish my share. Oh, tiresome, darling. I've been waiting about for hours. But then a few minutes more won't make any difference now, will it? Very well. Besides, the car will be back for half an hour at least. What do you mean? No respect. She's going to see him the vicar. What? What on earth's the matter? Uh, Ruth has taken the car? Yeah, she had to go and see the vicar. She won't be long. Oh, God. Why are you going off? Well, you've got to go outside and stop right now. Why? What for? Just Done. I haven't done anything. Elvira, you're blind. 
Let Yes, speak. I see. The bridge at the bottom of the hill. Yes. No, no, no. I'll come in once. Thank you. All the low down dirty tricks. Oh, 
about that this is witchcraft in my way. What the hell are you talking about? Your heart, Mr. Carnivine, all is not lost. Now look here, Pat Marconi, I really don't believe that any, any more formulas or whatever it is are necessary. But really, Mr. Carnivine, I assume you are still anxious to dematerialize your question. Yes, of course I am. I, I'm perfectly curious with her, but... But what? Well, uh, well, she's been a little down the last few days. You see, it's hard for my being angry with her, which she always hated. My second wife has not left her side for a moment. And you see, she's been having a rather bad time of it with one, one, with one thing and another. Well, your delicacy and credit are definitely quite interesting, Mr. Carmine. But you will give my blood. Not a damn. Oh, you're at liberty to believe whatever you want. Well, now, 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 don't go off on your high horses. There's no sense in that, is there? I have a bargain here that I think will be able to get rid of her without hurting her feelings and peace. It's very simple, really, and it only requires complete concentration for you and a minor chance for me. Well, I think you'll be able to manage it without lying there. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't think I'd like Charles! To... What's the matter? Oh, what is she doing here? Well, she came to offer her condolences. Well, they should have been congratulated. Well, now, you really shouldn't talk like that, now, It's an irresponsible taste. You know, the man, Mr. let me introduce my first wife, Oh. <laughs> what does she want, Charles? Send her away! Well, where is she in the room? Well, she's moving about rather rapidly. I'll let you know where she said this. She's the one who got me here in the first place, isn't she? Yes. Well, tell her to send me away again as soon as possible. I can't stand this house another minute. I'm well, surprised that you have Laura. I don't care how surprised you are. I'm sick of the whole thing. I want to go home. Well, that don't be childish. I'm not being childish. I mean it. Well, protoplasm strongly. What a disgusting thing to say. <laughs> but is she now? here. Oh. Are you happy, my dear? Tell oh, the silly old bitch to mind her own business. <laughs> Was the journey long? Was it difficult? Oh, she's oh, dotty. In just a moment, to Madame Marcotti. Wonderful, Mr. Condomine. Absolutely wonderful. For God's sake, Charles, send to the other room. I've got to talk to you. Matt Marconi, please. One moment. I almost had it. I can sense the vibration. Oh, well, Mara, don't be a spoiled sport. Go ahead and give her a little encouragement. If you promise to send her the other room, all oh, right. Distinctly that he didn't attract you at all. If I told you that, you'd gone through the roof. 
looking back on our marriage now, Elvira, I can see with horrid clarity that it is nothing but a mockery. When I think of what might have happened if I succeeded in getting you to the other side, it makes me shudder. It does, honestly. It would be nothing but swallowing and bickering all Emma and Emma. I swear I'll be better off with you, and you shall find your acceptable get in my way. Oh, so I get in your way, do I? Only because I was idiotic enough to imagine that you loved me. Please go away. Wake up, Matt Marconi, wake up. Get back up here, it's turning my bloody Daphne. What 
house and ask for them to be so. Well, it wasn't me, Madam Are you sure? Are you, you really that? sure? I'm absolutely positive. Great Scott. I think we've been working up the wrong tree. What do you mean? The severe case. I dematerialized old Lady Sudbury after she'd been firmly entrenched in the family chapel for over 17 years. How? Can you remember how? Chance, really, a fluke. I happen to have by the merest coincidence. Well, what chance? What fluke? Hold on, Mr. Conrad. Think. Who was in the house the night of the first sale? The Bradmans, um, Ruth, me, yourself. Ah, the Bradmans weren't here last night, were they? No. Quickly, my Christian. Well, I know it is. Uh, uh, you can go back to bed now. 
But I was in bed. Can I get down here? Um, I called. You I called and you answered, didn't I, Madam McCullough? Did I drop off? Do you think it's my concussion again? Oh, off you go in. Dear. Off you go in. And thank you. Thank you very much indeed. So what I have for? Oh, sir! What, what did she mean by... I'm very grateful to you, Madam McCullough. I don't know what your usual procedure is, but I... Trust you'll send in your account in due course? No. Oh. oh, no, Mr. Cunningham. I, I wouldn't dream of it. Well, um, perhaps you'll do me the favor of lunching with me one day soon? Wait, when you get back, I should be delighted. Get, get back. Take my advice, Mr. Cunningham. <sighs> Go away as soon as possible. You mean that, my colleague? Well, this must be an unhappy house for you, with memories both gay and grave in every corner, and, and also... Also... There are more things in heaven and earth, Mr. Conde Martin. Just go pack your traps and go away immediately. Do you mean they may still be here? Quien sabe, as the Spanish say. <laughs> It's been fascinating from start to finish. Absolutely fascinating, Mr. Conrad. If I go on to show my own way out, I know the way now. Cheerio. Ruth? Barbara, are you here? I know, dear. I knew it. I knew it. I'm going away, my dear. I'm going a long ways away where you can't follow me. Goodbye, my dear. 